Hello there, welcome to Discover Devon Film with me, John Tompkins. And this is a new show um, where I introduce you to actors, producers, directors from across Devon in the growing independent film scene down here. And my guest today is Tom Mennery, who is an actor, writer and composer based in Plymouth. So on the show today, I'm joined by Tom Henry. Say hello to the audience out there. Hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, to anybody that doesn't know who Tom Henry is, tell us about yourself. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, writer, actor, composer uh, in Plymouth. I've been doing films for uh, quite a while now. I've done uh, quite a few collaborations with you and uh, a lot of the other Devon players and the, the people down here in the southwest. Um, just trying to get noticed. So, I suppose. So, so that's quite a broad round of things to do. Not only you're actor, you write, and you're a composer. Mm. And what, which one started first? How did you get into the? Into well, film? I, I always enjoyed writing anyway. Um, English at school and into college, and that led to script writing. Uh, and because we didn't know many actors at the time, uh, I starred in my own films because I knew the scripts, and so that's how I started getting into the acting and decided that I can sort of do it. It's <laughs> it's not too bad. <laughs> Uh, and then people like yourself saw some of the films that we were putting out um, as wingless films with me and Jim Elton. Um, and yeah, you, you invited me along to other projects, and I suppose that's how you get known, really. Yeah, no, it's quite. Experience. I remember there was the, there was one there was one set in the church. I seem to remember. And there yeah, was, which uh, I'm not too keen on. That. <laughs> <laughs> but you seem to like. You, you saw no, I, it was just the. It's, it's a believability when you when you watch a film audience and it's when you go to the cinema it's it's that actor that draws you in you forget that it's Tom Mennery you're mm. into the you're into the character of right. the piece well I mean I, I wrote my own script so actually I, I, I suppose I knew what I could do and what I couldn't do I knew that yeah. I could yeah. reach which is an advantage level. yeah and you and you did the music uh, yes which again was just uh, because we didn't know many people yeah. who could do that kind of thing well we don't want to use uh, public domain, royalty-free stuff. You know, it, it's our own story, it's our own film. And it's, it's good when it's in the house. Yeah, yeah, so we may as well try and do our own music, so I gave it a go. Because, uh, well, one thing at the time, I remember you were doing, like, a film every couple of weeks, <laughs> which which is amazing <laughs> to the audience out there. It's like, it seems like uh, it. some film, filmmakers do a film a year. Mm. And here, well, they, were, here, they were only very short films, and it, it was the two of it, it was like a two-man crew. So... But th that's why I was, I was like, wingless film, isn't it? You don't need to do film every two weeks. It's like, <laughs> how do these guys do it? But they were, the, the, the genres that you use in it was like... Mm, we tried a few different styles, yeah, sci-fi and did a western on Dartmoor because you've got the landscape. Yeah. Um, supernatural and fantasy and things. Yeah, you try stuff out, I suppose. So, so going from there, um, we're going to see a few clips in a minute of the films that, you, you, that, that, that you've been involved in. Mm. Um, before we see that, can you explain a bit about sort of the other sort of roles you went you, you got into once you got to... Yeah, what else have I done? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, well, again, a, a few things with you. Um, did The Dark Tale. We... Which, um, to the audience, uh, Tom very, very kindly, um, he was playing a certain character, a narrator in the film... Mm. And you, I think you had a two and a half hour makeup, makeup job, <laughs> and I didn't actually recognise you when you when you came in because you were you were in a cloak. Yeah, and you're covered all, in bark. You're, you're covered in bark. <laughs> it, was good, it was a good process. Though. It was really interesting actually to to because you see that in yeah. films, you see the behind the scenes, and to actually have that done, it was quite enjoyable. And there was there's another one another film we can see some clips in a minute from your from your show well, mm. that it's you're in you're in a forest. And yeah. You're in, uh, the Liminal, yeah, that was uh, with um, that was Samuel Johns and Joshua Adams. Uh, it was in Plymouth or in Dartmoor. That was a, 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 from a cinematographer's point of view, very well shot, very mm. well put together. Yeah, we found this great location, and they had smoke machines and, and the lighting and stuff. Yeah. And it was it was very sort of slightly abstract and spiritual. And what we cannot do a conversation with you without mentioning the words Doctor Who. <laughs> 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 so, so tell us about it with Andy Robinson. Yeah, that was a. There was a, a charity anthology of stories um, called Seasons of War uh, for, for Doctor Who. Some of the fans were putting together short stories and things uh, in aid of charity for Caldwell Children. Um, and Andy was asked to do a short film to advertise it uh, based on the John Hurt's character, the War Doctor, 
from the anniversary episodes and I played the younger version of him. Didn't get to see my face in the film, but it's definitely me. Oh, no, it's, it's definitely you. You got that. Uh, <laughs> so I got to, so, oh, no, no, we did. did we did very really? slightly. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, but I had to <laughs> pretend to be the doctor for. But that for really, days. that really, that really took off. That it was a great film, and um, that was because of the script. I think Andy yeah. wrote a very simple story. It, was, it, it wasn't just an excuse to have explosions and Daleks and battles and things. It, it was quite a nice human story. Nice concise story. Well, so let's let's see some of these. So so run the clips. diverse range of work you've done over the last few years so um, we're going to go to current pro projects this mm -hmm. is I suppose it, in some ways it's like crew meetings because um, <laughs> Tom is very kindly he's collaborating with me at the moment we're working on the feature film and it's called Marina Gore mm. and you're writing, writing the script so yeah I mean you you came up with the ideas and you wrote a draft and uh, hopefully what I like about script editing is that you can find the initial ideas that work really well and, and try and do more with them, um, which I think I hopefully did in this case. Oh, no, no, definitely, because um, to, well, to filmmakers out there, one of the best things is finding a good screenwriter that you can collaborate with and you like the ideas, because we worked on a film called They're Coming to start with, mm -hmm. uh, a dart towel and the runner, and it's great. Um, you don't want to do everything in film, you don't want to direct, produce, write and mm. things. It's good to throw out to someone because you come up with new ideas and things. The collaboration process yeah. of film is really exciting. Mm. So, I mean, Rowena is, is, is a supernatural uh, kind of thriller, I suppose, isn't it? Um, but your original pitch to me, I think, was uh, a friend's reunited for ghosts. Yeah, and pe <laughs> people love that Which idea. Which I really like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But of course, when you start developing the story, the, a lot of other elements come in and you, you need to make it a narrative and other characters and things. And so that slightly got a bit lost, I think, that original concept yeah, in, in, in the draft you did. So I wanted to bring it back to that idea that she's a, a, a ghost counsellor and keep that, keep that as, as the core of the story. Yeah, because yeah. it, it's a nice idea. It draws people into it. I mean, that's one thing that some some big directors out there that that, that are successful mm. is is it's one of the most important elements to people filmmakers out there is your audience. Mm. Um, you may have a great cast and crew. You might have a fantastic shoot, but if you don't draw the audience in, you, you're a bit lost. Yeah, you need those strong yeah. concepts. I think. So what other, apart from what, what you worked on, what other scripts and things that you're working on at the moment? Uh, I'm doing a, a sci-fi uh, series with Tom Hutchings called Honest Tommy, uh -huh. which is on the go. Honest Tommy? Tom? Two Toms? It wasn't supposed to. <laughs> it was a working title that stuck. And no, right. Nobody else likes it apart from me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we want to try and be multimedia. It's a um, retro sci-fi adventure kind of series. We want to do radio episodes, you know, um, comics and, and uh, live action is the main thing and, and stories and prose and stuff as well. Try and build a universe. Because the bits I've seen of it, I'm thinking Hitchhikers, Guys of the Galaxy, um, yes. mass, massive Douglas Adams fan, yeah. which I prefer, I don't know what you prefer, I prefer the radio show. Well, this is the thing with, with, the... with Hitchhikers. Like, he, he does say that every version of Hitchhikers is different. It, it's not as if, you know, oh, they've missed yeah. out that character in, in this adaptation. It's wrong. No, each one plays to the strengths of the media. So there's things they do on the radio show that you can't do on live action, and the live action expands the visuals. And, and I always remember that it was, it was the shoe shops. If anybody hasn't, hasn't listened to the radio show, there's, there's a planet full of shoe shops, which ladies out there probably love that. Every shop is a shoe shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, hopefully it's that kind of irreverent sort of <laughs> tumor you're trying to get to with Honest Tommy. Um, fan of Douglas yeah. Adams and Terry Pratchett as well. So that's what we're trying to tap into. I think there's a, an audience for it. Whenever we mention we're doing a retro sci-fi project, everyone goes, oh, great. Yeah, and that buys you into the, into the conventions. Yeah. That's enough, another sort of yes. audience. And, mm. Yeah. So, so, so that's the writing. Mm. 
acting to any actors out there. So when I interviewed, in, interviewed Diana Townsend, mm -hmm. we were talking about the producer thing and how to work with people and things. Um, but it's advice out there for actors. Mm -hmm. So the audience out there, what advice would you give to somebody thinking about getting into acting? Uh, I don't know, because I mean, I, I sort of started through school and college and, and doing my own projects and gradually being noticed by people like yourself. So I, I don't know how you break into the industry particularly. Um, but I do like the advice that Harrison Ford gives in, oh. his, interview, in his interviews where he's, he's on the ball. Because yeah. <laughs> he gets really nervous and, he, and, and I think that's a... I think apparently he does have to take medication to, to calm his nerves when he's in interviews. So sometimes he look, he's a bit sort of all over the place. But when he's really focused, he really gets, has an insight in, into film. And, and one of the things he always says an actor should do that's the most important thing is to serve the story. And I think that's, you know, it, it's not about ego, it's not about showing your face on camera, or, or but you, you, you serve whatever the story needs. So if you need to be understated, then that's what you do, and if you need to be overly dramatic, then you do that. I think find good stories and good scripts and be a, a storyteller, I suppose. That, that's the thing. Plus, it, you, you combine the two because you're a good writer and good actor, so it's combining those two elements, which mm. must be quite exciting. I mean... It can be, yeah, yeah. I mean... It's, it's all stories, it's all, it's all narrative. Yeah. yeah. And, and so where do, you, do you, where do you see your career going? Where would you like to push yourself? I don't know particularly. I mean, I've, I've done a few... I want to do a bit more theatre, I think. Um, I've been working with the Restless Theatre Company currently. Uh, we're going to do an Othello in a few months. Um, yeah, I want to do more theatre because I'm more comfortable with film. I'm less sure about theatre. So I think, I think doing more of that is more of a challenge. And one question I ask a lot of actors and a lot of producers, directors, is anybody out there is like an actor that you admire, you inspire to, I won't say inspired to be, but the, where their career is heading kind of thing. steal their success. Yeah, yeah steal their success. I, I want that, that's mine. Um, well, I mean, because I watch a lot of Doctor Who, um, I've sort of been influenced by David Tennant quite a lot. Um, and people say very nice things about him. I think that that's, yeah. that's really nice. <laughs> Nobody has a bad word to say about him, which which you'd want that kind of reputation, I think. Um, but he's also very intense and very focused on his roles, and he inhabits these characters. And, and a lot of it. actors like to do Shakespeare because you've got the yeah, a diverse number of roles kind of thing, and it mm. pushes you. Yeah, with like Hamlet, for instance, yes. like the amount of great actors. You think of Kenneth Branagh, what he's done. Mm. So the Shakespeare Live recently, all the yeah. Hamlets came up on stage. Oh yeah, that, 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 was, that was really funny. And Prince Charles was the last. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 sum, sum up, um, this is your pluck moment, I call it. You get to plug away, yeah. come projects, <laughs> you can plug the project I'm working on. Sure, okay. <laughs> so, so, so the audience out there, plug away. Well, we've got Rowena Gould <laughs> yeah. coming up, which we should be starting filming in Relatively July. Soon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, got Honest Tommy, still ongoing. We've got a lot of um, behind the scenes making of videos up on YouTube if you search for Honest Tommy, honesttommy.co.uk, uh, Twitter, everything else. Um, we've got a lot of fun videos and things that we're doing. Um, Othello yeah, in July as well, actually. Uh, Restless Theatre Company. And uh, let's just search social media for Tom Henry. Super. See what comes up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for joining me on the sofa today, okay. and good luck with your camera projects. I no doubt I'll see you soon because you're a great man. I suppose you'll have to. <laughs> Sorry about that. But uh, do, I, do I make good coffee? Last question. Uh, tea. Tea. Oh. It's fine. Well, I failed on that. That can't. Well, see you all soon. <laughs> <laughs>